Welcome back to the Youth Bible of One Year. We're on day three today, and the title of today's devotion is Talk As You Walk. Maybe you're walking right now, or maybe you're lying in bed or on a bus, or wherever you are, you can always talk with God. And as we see in our Bible passages for today, we see people that walk with God, not just physically walking along one step at a time, but walking in their whole lives, giving their whole lives to God and talking to him constantly as they're walking with him. So how do we do this? How do we talk as we walk? And why is it such a good idea to do so? Well, let's find out in today's devotion. I love walking. Apparently it's one of the best forms of physical exercise. Of course, walking is also a means, and for some people, their only means of transport. Walking for whatever reason is more enjoyable with someone else. Walking and talking is a great way to communicate with family, friends, and also with God. The point is that we're doing two things at the same time. We're not just taking exercise or travelling. As we walk together, we are in communion with one another. Both Enoch and Noah walked with God. They didn't just sit, kneel or stand with God, the kinds of actions we would often associate with spending time with God, but they were also in communion with God when doing something else. While you're doing other things, working, eating, exercising or relaxing, you can be in communion with God at the same time. Personally, I find it the best way to pray. This has been my pattern for the last few years. After reading the Bible each day, I go out and walk around our local park, which is almost deserted early in the morning. I note down anything I sense the Holy Spirit saying as I pray. You can pray as you walk to the bus stop or walk from one activity to the next. Talk as you walk. The Bible has a great deal to say about walking with God. It's how you were intended to live. God's desire for you is that you walk humbly in a relationship with Him. This is what Jesus has made possible. You are to walk as Jesus did. You may stumble from time to time, but one day you will walk with him dressed in white. From Psalm 3 But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. Walk with your head held high. David walked with God. This does not mean that everything was perfect. This psalm was written during a rebellion by David's son Absalom. They've been partly caused by David's adultery. Yet David repented of what he'd done, and God forgave him, and his relationship with God was restored. David did not have an easy life. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying to me, God will not deliver him. David cries out, but you, God, shield me on all sides. You ground my feet. You lift my head high. Like David, Bring your fears and requests to God. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. In spite of his distressing situation, God lifted up David's head. God does not want you to be downcast. Don't keep looking at the regrets behind you, the problems around you, and the sin within you. Rather, lift up your head and see the help above you. Walk with your head held high and your eyes fixed on him. David was able to say, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. In spite of all the troubles, he seems to have a deep peace, like a lake, where there may be rough waves on the surface, but deeper down, there's a great stillness. Lord, I pray for the year ahead that you would help me to walk with you daily in the way of peace, with my head held high, trusting you to supply all I need for the day ahead. New Testament from Matthew 2 and 3 As soon as Jesus was baptised, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Walk in step with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. Whereas John's baptism was symbolic, Jesus would baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This prophecy is then dramatically affirmed 
when the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus as he's baptized, showing that he is the one John is speaking about and that Jesus is able to pour out this same Holy Spirit on you and me. In many ways, Jesus' baptism was different from ours. He did not need to be baptized for repentance, and he was already filled with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was hesitant about baptizing him, but Jesus said, Let it be so now. It's proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus identified with us, sinful human beings, right from the start. He did this so that he could bear our sin on the cross for us. As a result, you are able to experience the Holy Spirit in a similar way and walk in step with the Spirit. We see here something of what it means to walk in step with the Spirit. First, get refined in the fire. John said that whereas he baptized with water, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit will come like a refining fire to bring power and purity in your life. Knowing the refining fire of the Spirit in this life means that you can be free from the fear of the fire of judgment when Jesus returns. Second, be filled with peace. When Jesus was baptized and came out of the water, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. The dove is a symbol of peace which the Holy Spirit brings to your life. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. Third, be assured of your adoption. The voice from heaven said, This is my Son. Jesus is the Son of God in a unique way. However, the Holy Spirit assures all of us that through what Jesus has done for us, we too are sons and daughters of God. You receive the Spirit of adoption, and by Him you cry, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit Himself testifies with your spirit that you are a child of God. Both know that you are loved by God. The voice from heaven said, Whom I love. The Apostle Paul writes that God's love for you is poured into your heart by the Holy Spirit. Fifth, feel his pleasure. The voice from heaven says, With him I am well pleased. Again, it is supremely true of Jesus. But as you walk in step with the Spirit, you too can experience this sense of God's delight and pleasure. I love the moment in the film Chariots of Bar when the Olympic runner Eric Liddell says, When I run, I feel his pleasure. Lord, thank you that you give me your Holy Spirit to refine me, to give me peace, to assure me that I'm a child of God, to know your love and to feel your pleasure. Help me to walk in step with the Spirit. Old Testament from Genesis 4 to 6 Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Walk in relationship with God. Human beings are the pinnacle of God's creation. God created us to walk in a relationship with him. When God created the human race, he made it godlike, with a nature akin to God. He created both male and female and blessed them, the whole human race. However, sadly, the human race went astray. Human evil was out of control. People thought evil, imagined evil, 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 evil from morning to night. It broke God's heart. Evil starts in our thinking and imagination, that is, in our hearts. It's a case of garbage in, garbage out. We need to watch not just our actions, but also our thoughts, attitudes, motives and imagination. In the midst of corruption and evil, it's possible to be different and to make a difference. Enoch and Noah are two examples of those who did not go along with the crowd, but walked with God. It appears that after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God for the rest of his life. There's something so powerful, amazing, and almost miraculous about seeing the birth of our own children. One of my very close friends became a Christian through experiencing the birth of his first child. Enoch walked steadily with God. And then, one day, he was simply gone. God took him. Noah also walked with God. He found grace, favor in the eyes of the Lord. In spite of all the evil going on around him, Noah was a good man, a man of integrity in his community. Noah walked with God. Noah believed God and built a boat 
even though it was not raining and there was no water in sight, Noah did exactly what God told him to do. Lord, help me to be righteous and blameless in my thoughts, words and deeds, walking with you in a close relationship. Help me to do everything you tell me to do. Pippa adds, In Genesis 5, 24, it says, Enoch walked with God and then he was no more because God took him away. I've always thought this sounded a good route to heaven. Enoch didn't seem to have to go through the normal dying process. Let's pray. Lord, I want to walk alongside you every single day. Thank you that you've come into my life and chosen me for a purpose. Lord, I want to be in communion with you every single day. Strengthen me to do so. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.